All right, as Barack Obama embarks on the sixth year of his presidency, hope and change seems to be looking a whole lot more like doom and gloom. Now, before we bring in our lively audience for tonight's, well, thoughts on things and where they stand for the president, let's take a look at some of the numbers that have changed dramatically for the worse for the country during his tenure. Now, for starters, when Barack Obama entered the White House back in January 2009, his approval rating it stood at a very healthy 68 percent. But today, while well, the very same Gallup poll reveals only 39 percent of Americans approve of the way that he's handling his job in office. So why the huge drop? Well, I can name just a few of the possibilities right off the top of my head, all dealing, of course, with the president's failing policies and beginning with the fact that he has added more to this country's debt than pretty much all presidents before him combined. Now, back in 2009, the U.S. national debt was $10 trillion, but today it stands at a frightening, a whopping $17.3 trillion and rising every second. Now, that's just plain scary. And for national security, well, for this country standing in the world, for our children and our grandchildren, it's not looking good there either. And moving on, thanks to the president and his brilliant agenda, the poverty rate in America now has skyrocketed since he took office. Now, when 13.2 percent of Americans were living in poverty in 2009, today that number is 15 percent or, get this, 46.5 million people living in poverty today in the United States. Now, why? Maybe because the average American family is now making far less money than it did when he took office. Median household income was almost $60,000 back in 2009. Today, it's about $52,000 per year per family. And because incomes are dropping, all well, the number of Americans living on food stamps, well, that increased from 32 million in 2009 to a whopping 47 million Americans today. Now, those are the facts, and that's where things stand as the president now begins the sixth year of his presidency. So we bring in our studio audience for reaction. Hi, everybody. Good to see you. Jammu and Rick Unger sitting back to back. I like that. All right, let me, let me put up on the screen, first of all, the biggest problem that the American people think when it comes to the problem in the country. What do, how many think they know the answer what the biggest problem is? What is it, Doug? It's government. government. It's a failure of our system to produce results, leading the economy to suffer, people to be underemployed, and people to feel hopeless about what's going on in Washington. This is your president, your party. It's, if he's failing and he's a Democrat or Republican, we have to be honest. Sean. Okay, now let's put up the seven most devastating economic statistics. Jammu and Rick, I want you guys to pay special close attention. 91.8 million Americans no longer in the workforce. Number of jobless working age Americans has risen 9.6 million people since January 2009. 47.4 million Americans rely on food stamps. Uh, 10.98 million Americans receive disability checks. One in three Americans have felt or fell into poverty uh, between 2009-2011. 42% of Americans say they are worse off financially than a year ago. The U.S. debt he called $9 trillion irresponsible and unpatriotic. Now it's 17 plus trillion. Rick Unger, well, can you admit this is failure? If you're going to put it that way. <laughs> Look, you know, there's so many statistics you put there. And, and I actually agree with Doug to, to some extent. If government can do something about it and it goes wrong, then you have to blame government. There is something else at work here. Hold and on a second. Yeah. This is his presidency. Yeah. He's had five years. Yeah. I, if you say it's George W. Bush's no, no, fault, I, I fact, am going to assault you on national TV. Well, I might say it then because that would be worth watching. But, but no, in fact, just the opposite. I think that so much of this is the result of business cycles. I don't blame George Bush. I don't blame Barack Obama. And you know what? When it turns around, I'm not going to give Barack Obama the credit either. Amy, it's 17 trillion cycles. in debt. Look at these numbers, 91 right. million Americans out of the labor force, the highest number in decades. That's not Obama's fault? That's a bill of indictment. And I think an even bigger problem is that the president hasn't kept his eye on the ball when it comes to th this economic crisis. What did he spend the first few months of his presidency doing? A foolish and failed gun control agenda. You feel like this presidency has just really been lurching from fiasco to fiasco with no clear vision, no clear agenda. And today we're addressing the NSA. Why are we talking about the economy? Two hundred hundred million text messages a day. I don't like it. All right, Jamu, the, you love the president. You defend the president every time you're on this program. Are you going to tell me that this is a record of success? It's a record of reality. In looking at 
in looking at who do a, a I reality blame, of success or Sean, failure? You asked who is to blame. No, I asked I you if this is success. To, That's what I asked. We have to look at yeah. the titans of industry. It is fantastic that the stock market like has bounced back. It is fantastic that we had 4% GDP growth at the end of last quarter. But who has not benefited from this? The workers whose productivity is up. You have conservatives fighting the minimum wage that hasn't been raised, right. that hey, needs to be raised. Let me, let me, you hang raise on. the minimum wait, 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 wait. wage, hang on a second. Wait. you get people Help off me the up. food stamps. Help me up. You get people no, off of If they of have Medicaid. a job, they get off but of food no, stamps. Conservatives Michelle. decided to All right, go ahead. You want to, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. create a dependent class, which is exactly what Obama and the liberals are, have been doing, is creating this dependent permanent class. It's a war on poor. It's not a war on poverty. And they're creating it, and yet they say that the right is the one perpetuating it. No. Youth unemployment right now, 16.3%. That number wasn't up there, but that tells you right there, people my age and younger are hurting, and we are the ones subsidizing health care, Medicaid, Social Security, you name it. Big government. Growing up. Okay, We're, you, you want to go there? Because yeah. my debt is saddled right now because of the older generation, and you look at what's happening with Obamacare currently. That didn't answer currently. my question. Who subsidized you growing up? I, that's a ridiculous that. statement, your parents first did. of all. Yeah, but oh, I, I want to be independent. Why, why do you I want have a to problem be working. subsidizing their generation? Yeah. What else is mom and dad? What I'm but, saying is young people want to be independent. It's all the same. No, the no it's, not, it's, it's not. Wait a minute. Voluntary and not voluntary. And that is not voluntary. Look, the, the thing is here is America is no longer in the top 10 countries among the world when it comes to economic freedom. And if you look why, it has to do with the fact that this, uh, this administration continues to place more regulations, more rules on businesses. And it's not getting better. I mean, if you look at the economy in December, only 75,000 jobs were added. That is not progress. I don't see anything good about that. And if you look at the amount of people who've been unemployed for 27 weeks or more, it is holding steady at 3.9 million. It's worse than that. Look, well, hang on. It's worse than that because now, Michelle, we're debating whether or not people that get benefits for 99 weeks ought to have it extended. Sean, I'm glad that you yeah. brought up the minimum wage because it, it's important important, I think, to understand that what you're talking about in most of these statistics is subsidizing the ramifications of Obama's economic policy. And I think the minimum wage is another good example of that. You can raise the price of labor, but you can't actually raise its value with government policy. And that means that, means that all you're going to do is raise the cost to businesses to hire people, particularly at the low-skilled level. That's going to result in more people unemployed. All right, I'll tell you what, let me ask a quick question. How many worry that maybe America's better days with all the debt, unfunded liabilities, are how many think America's better days may be behind us? John, and if it That's does, right. Right. If it how does many think turn around, my generation loses. You, know, you talk about the younger generation. My generation is the one that when we start the recovery, it's too late for people well, my you're age. still a teenager, because so that's... <laughs> Yeah. I'm, I'm a little bit older than you are, so by the time this starts turning around, my retirement, the people my age, my peers, are not going to, it's not going to make it up. We can't, we don't have time to make it up. All right. So we are, this is, affects our life. The American people know this. That's why President Obama's uh, ratings are in the tank. He has got approval rating that's gone down into the 30s, and this is, these are Nixonian numbers, and we don't even have a Watergate uh, uh, type of, or a, No, we actually we do. We have an IRS no, scandal, well, a fast nothing and furious. That stuck, nothing that has stuck because the mainstream media is defending him. So so right now, this is just the American people hurting. They know who it is. They know whose fault that, it that's is. That's the thing. I right doubt anyone in this president. room is really hurting. But there are 50 million Americans on food stamps that are feeling it every single day, every single week, every single month. We're going to take a break. 